Matthew chapter 15, verses 8 and 9. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines that the commandments of men. At this time, we'll go ahead and turn over to Harold. There we go. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I have a PowerPoint today, so <laughs> I don't usually preach with PowerPoints, but uh, the visuals that I use, I need, I need pictures for you guys. Um, okay. I'll be like the pastor. It doesn't work. I don't know why. <laughs> Point it back there. There we go. Um, so I was, I was, I was coming home from work, and I had just talked to one of um, the my my friends at work. Um, her name is Kelly, and I was like, I just, I don't know what I'm going to preach about. I don't know. I'm, I've got to. And she was like, Oh, well, you know, at, at our church, they um, they will break down a song. You know, like a hymn or something, they'll break it down about, you know, that kind of like, oh, I said, I, I've done that before. I said, that's, that's a good idea. Um, I said, but usually as I'm driving back and forth to work, I'm praying. I said, you know, the Lord always gives it to me. He does. I don't know why I worry, but I do. But the Lord always gives it to me. And I was driving, and this word just popped in my head, cycle of refinement. And I was like, okay. And I was like, oh, oh. And <laughs> whenever I preach about something, it's always driven to me. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Lord, got that loud and clear. Um, so in the hospital and in industry, we have um, processes that go through refinement, cycle of refinement, uh, Lean Six Sigma. Mike kind of knows about that, right? Are you, did you ever get your black belt in that? No. Green belt, that's what I have, is my green belt in six, uh, Lean Six Sigma. Anyway, so there's um, a process that we always go through to refine, um, refine processes. Like, okay, here's, here's how we think it works. Here's, let's, and it's working fine, but what can we do to make it better? So they're like, okay, well, where, let's, let, they have a process. And the one I'm going to talk about is called Demaic. Can you click me forward, Brandon? Maybe I need to. No, it is on. Is it? There we go. There we go. Yeah, that's me. Okay. So um, what we have with this is called Demaic. Okay. This is our Demaic model. And each letter stands for something. D is for define. M is for measure. Uh, a is for analyze, I is for improve, and C is for control, okay? So basically, you take your process and you run it through, run it through the mill of this thing called Demaic. Um, so you're probably asking yourself, what does this have to do with me and, and Jesus, right? What does this have to do with me? Well, I'm going to show you. So I want to read you um, a verse, Ephesians 4, 17 through 24. And I know it's kind of small, so I'll, I'll read it to you. It says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to the lewdness to work all uncleanliness and greediness. But you have not learned so, Christ. If indeed you have heard him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your own mind, of your mind, 
and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. This tells us we have to do better. We are to be better. As Christians, we're to put off the lewdness of our heart, of our, of our sinful place. Get rid of that. Again, this process, we're going to use this process to put on a new, put on the new man, right? We're going to use this process to put on the new man. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, after being baptized, have you sinned? Yeah, <laughs> we all have. We all have after being baptized, right? Um, so we all are called to do better, so we can do better. Um, we, weren't, we weren't miraculously perfect when we, after we got baptized, were we? That's, that's not how it works. It's a process of refinement, right? Our Christian life is a process of refinement. Um, but here's where we need to be careful, just like the scribes and the Pharisees um, who did what they were supposed to do, but did not know Jesus. Matthew 15, 8 through 9 says, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Isn't that exactly what they did? Keep the law, keep the law, keep the law. You can only, you can only, you, you have to keep the law. No other way, no other way. You have to keep the law. And they lost their heart. You, you, you can't lose your heart in this. The heart and the head go together. You have to have both. So, um, we are not using this model, this process of refinement to say, look, I'm doing everything right. I'm perfect. I've, re I've refined every process in my life and I'm perfect. No, 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 no. That is not what we're saying. Okay. We're going to use this process to educate ourselves and put our minds on the right track, right? Um, so this is just a tool to see where we are and what we can do better to draw closer to Jesus. So let's go through our first one. And I know some of these are kind of small. I tried to do one. So the first one, the first example I'm going to use is, okay, define the problem, right? The problem is sin, right? Sin is the problem. Genesis 3, 1 through 4. Now the serpent was more cunning. Well, Brandon. So, there you go. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall now eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Hmm. Define, define the problem, sin. Quantify, measure the problem. What's, how much sin do we have? It's worldwide, isn't it? It's all over the world. Genesis 6, 5, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Sin, that's all they could think about was sin. Now we know we found, he found favor in a few people, right? Noah. So measure the problem, quantify the problem. How big of a problem is it? Next, analyze, identify the cause of the problem. Satan, the author, right? He's the author. Genesis 3, 14, 15. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you, and you shall bruise his heel. Okay. 
cause of the problem. Next, improve. How can we improve this process, right? Well, the solution is always Jesus, right? Uh, there's, there's many things on the internet, memes that go around. What's the answer? It's always Jesus, right? Uh, I've seen kids, on, they posted a kid on a, on a meme or whatever that was doing a, a test, and it says, what is your answer? And he put Jesus for every answer. <laughs> Jesus is always the answer. <laughs> not on a math test, it's not. <laughs> um, so uh, our, our, our answer to, to improvement is Jesus. Now, Matthew 1, 18 through 21. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." Best answer ever, right? Maintain the solution, right? How do we maintain our relationship with Jesus? Worship, right? John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Worship, maintaining our relationship with Jesus. So there we went through. We just went through the model. We picked the problem. We measured it, analyzed, figured out a solution, implemented the solution, and how is that solution working, right? So, did we get rid of sin? No, we didn't. We're not even close. We did not get rid of sin. Um, then where did we go wrong? Where did we go wrong in our model? Let's, let's take a look. It says, um, sin is the problem. It's worldwide. Right? Sin is the problem. It's worldwide. Satan is, is, is the cause of the problem. Jesus is the answer. Maintain a worship relationship with Jesus. Actually, the problem is us. <laughs> so, the problem is still sin, it's still worldwide, but what is the cause of the problem? It's not Satan, it's you and I. Um, but now having, but now, us having eaten of the, no, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil changes it, right? So how are we the problem? Did Satan take that apple and shove it in Eve's mouth and Adam? No, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't. We willfully sinned. We put that apple, that fruit, we put it to our mouths, didn't we? Both Adam and Eve. They both willfully, willfully sinned against God. Hmm. So that kind of changes things, doesn't it? So if we analyze us as a problem, Jesus is still the answer. But then that kind of takes us back to where we have to define the problem. So I want to I kind of do one on me, right? So here is a process of refinement for me. <laughs> so what is my big problem? Anger, right? I get angry. When do I get angry? What, how often? Monday through Friday, driving to work. Ha, ha, ha. That's a problem, right? <laughs> Every Monday through Friday as I drive to work. Um, I had to go to work last Sunday. 
um, on night shift and I was driving to work. I'm like, oh, well, it'll be different now. Oh, oh no, oh no, it's not. Because now you have Sunday drivers that drive even slower than the people who go into work in the morning. Ah. Abby now goes to work at the same time I do. So she was behind me one morning and she texted me, hey Dan, I'm behind you. And I waved at her and we were heading out of town and <laughs> it was like three cars, I think, in front of us. <laughs> like, oh, time to pass. Mm. Off around three cars. <laughs> She's texting me. <laughs> You're crazy. What are you doing? It's like, well, I had a chance and I passed him because I'm not getting behind three cars and trying to pass later when I have a clear shot now. We're already doing 60 miles an hour, but, you know, I can't trust those people. I can't trust them because as soon as those curves come up, they hit the brakes and they do 20 miles an hour around the curve. And then 60 on the straightaway, 20 in the curves, 60. And I'm like, <sighs> so just keeps pushing my anger up and up and up. All right. So what's the cause of the problem? Slow drivers. They're the cause of all my problems right now. <laughs> so how do we implement a solution? Ban all the slow drivers. Well, how are you going to do that, right? Let's have a BMB. Let's have a speed test. So when you get your driver's license, if you can't drive the speed limit, through the curve, you don't get your driver's license, <laughs> right? I wish it was this easy. It's not. It's not. So, is, 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 is it slow drivers? Is that the problem? Is that my problem? No, I think it is. <laughs> I yell at him like it is. My problem is still anger. But the cause of the problem is my lack of love for my fellow man, right? Isn't, isn't that why I get angry at them? If that, was my, if that was my wife, my daughter, my son in front of me, would I be yelling at them? Well, probably, but <laughs> ah! I, would, I, I actually have their phone numbers. I would be calling them and yelling at them over the phone. Still, with love, <laughs> I passed Misty one day on the way back. I didn't even know it was her. I was, with, I was in Brandon's car, so, of course, you know. And it, <laughs> it was soon to be a passing zone. I just know the road well enough to know that I can soon pass you. Um, no, we were out at the hotel on 50, out by 446, and I was, we were coming back from Seymour going up the hill, and that's a passing zone. You just have to wait till you get past that road. Well, I didn't wait till I got past that road. I just went ahead, pulled out, and took off. Brandon's car, oh my gosh, that's so much fun to drive on that road. Like, I, I hit like 105 passing her, because that thing is just so fast. Because usually in my little four-cylinder car, I have to push the gas all the way down a full four to five seconds before I can pull out. So I have to be thinking about this way ahead of time because my car is a little four cylinder that's also electric. So it's not the most um, responsive car. <laughs> it's supposed to be easy on gas. That's why I bought it. Uh, so when, I'm, when I have to pass, I have to know, I have to make that decision right now and pass. But anyway, Brandon, you're zooming out. Am I doing it? Oh, sorry. He's trying to get me in shot. Um, so the problem that analyze is my lack of love for my fellow man. That's, that's my problem. That's my problem. I don't, I need to make sure I see that person in the car in front of me as a child of God, as someone who is part of my family who I love, who I want to make sure I don't scare and run off the road, right? Um, so how do I want to implement this solution? I need a closer relationship with Jesus, don't I? To have love for my fellow man, I need a closer relationship with Jesus. I need to develop that relationship before I can develop this relationship, right? Right? Because if I don't have love for God, 
I, I, I can hardly muster the love for my fellow man. Because we all know that's more difficult, right? <laughs> because they do irritating things. <laughs> um, so does that change my problem? It does, doesn't it? Because now my problem is I don't have a close enough relationship with Jesus. I'm doing the pastor now. I, did, I, did I undo the connection, Brandon? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just zoom out a little bit. I'm on your lap. Okay. All right, but I need my clicker back. No, no. Do I have it now? There we go. Okay. Well, zoom out because I'm going to move around. Anyway, so now my definition of the problem is not having a good relationship with Jesus, right? So again, cycle of refinement, cycle of refinement. What I think is my, the cause of my problem is not really the cause of my problem. Now it's defining the problem. Why don't I have a closer relationship with Jesus, right? In infrequent study and connection. I pray every day. I do. Every day on the way to work, I pray. And then I'm interrupted sometimes with <laughs> bouts of yelling, of use your blinker. Sorry, Jesus, let's get back to <laughs> the prayer. <laughs> use your blinker. <laughs> it's called a turn signal, people. Use it. So, but then I get right back to my prayers. Sorry, and I, I apologize. Sorry. Sorry, Lord. Let's get back to, <laughs> let's get back to this. Um, so I pray every day, but how often am I studying? How often am I making that connection with Jesus? Once, twice a week, sometimes if I'm lucky. Um, I'm missing that daily morning connection where I get my mind right, where I sit my mind for the day, before I, se before I step out of the house and into the car, I need to have that connection with Jesus. I need that before my day starts. Um, but I'm not getting it. I'm not getting that connection. So identify the cause of the problem. I'm not connecting. I, I'm, I'm missing that connection. I'm, I'm, mi I'm not taking the time to do it. Um, so get up 15 minutes early to study and connect. Some people get up an hour early. Um, when you make changes in your life, start small. Um, every every uh, diet advice I've ever heard of, every quick loss, weight loss thing, they're like, oh, you can lose 50 pounds in a week. Oh, that's not going to be, that's going to be a major change in lifestyle. Really? No. But it doesn't last. We know those don't last. Small changes implemented over a significant amount of time leads to better outcomes. We know that. Let's make small changes first, get that as a habit under our belt, and then improve on them. Cycle of refinement, right? Cycle of refinement. Okay, I made this change. I quit smoking, right? Great, I quit smoking. What's next? Let's cut out meat. All right, did that. What's next? Let's, let's start exercising. Let's start getting healthy, right? We have to be careful that we don't backslide. That's what this tool is to be used for. Where am I, where am I at? Am I backsliding? What changes do I need to make? to move forward. So improve, implement the solution. Get up 15 minutes earlier to study and connect. You know my biggest problem right now? My biggest problem right now in the morning is the first thing I do is I get on Facebook and start wishing everybody a happy birthday. Whose birthday is it today? I can connect to people on Facebook. That's not who I need to connect with. Not right then and there. Who I need to connect with first is Jesus. That's where my connection needs to be. Then, 
when I go to the bathroom, I can connect with people on Facebook. <laughs> like everybody else, right? <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> That's when that time needs to happen. Um, but what's sad is the older I get, the longer it takes me to get ready in the morning. Because I used to be able to get up at 5, leave by, or up at 6, leave by 7, get there by 8, no problem. Now, I get up at 6, by 6.30, I'm still, oh, oh, I, I got to get going. Huh. Then I run into the bathroom, run into the shower, get dressed, run out the door. I'm not connecting with the person I need to connect with the first thing in the morning, which is Jesus. So maintain the solution. So if my anger is improving, keep studying, keep connecting, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Once you find a solution, don't stop. Don't stop. Um, I want to reiterate, reiterate again, this is just a tool to help you Look at yourself, evaluate yourself. Is my relationship with Jesus becoming stagnant? Am I at a standstill in my relationship? Because I kind of feel like I'm, I, that's where I'm at right now. I kind of feel like that's where I'm at right now. Um, I, I know most of the Bible stories right? I've, I've read them. I know them. You guys have all read them too. You know them. So then I think, oh, why waste my time? I already know what this story is. I know what it means. And I know the outcome, right? <laughs> I, know how this, I know how this book is going to end. The Bible is not meant to be a one and done book. The Bible is meant for you to use it as a life manual. Our lives change constantly. As we grow older, like what we just said, they grow up so fast. Joseph, when he learned the Bible stories in Sabbath school, meant a certain thing to him then. As a college student, if we went back and read them, they would mean something different to him now because his life is changing. Things he skipped over before, oh, that doesn't apply to me. I'm not an adult. Oh, now I'm becoming an adult. <laughs> These things do apply to me. Then as we get older, as we have kids of our own, oh, the lessons about children, that, that impacts me now. I need to read this again. As we have grandchildren, as we get older, and we're coming to the end of our days, it means something else. It means something at every stage of our life. We can't stop reading it. We have to keep studying. We have to keep moving forward. We have to keep improving. We have to keep improving. I really feel that this was meant for me. So even though my finger's like this, don't think I'm, I'm, pull, I'm shaking my finger at you. Okay, it's back at me. Um, we can't keep resting on our laurels, right? We are one of the most Bible-educated churches I have ever met. We are. We know our Bibles. We know it. I'm afraid that's where we get lazy. That's where we're like, oh... I know those stories. I don't need to read that again. We do. We do. I do. I do. I really do. Um, try, try to figure out what you can do to use as a tool to, prov to keep moving forward. What is your cycle of refinement as a Christian? What am I doing now? What does God want me to do? Right? This is, this, is a good, this is a good thing to measure 
against, right? <laughs> That's the best thing to measure against. Am I doing this? Oh, no, I'm not. All right, well, let's, let's lay this out. Am I doing what Jesus wants me to do? There's always a cycle of refinement that can happen somewhere in your life that needs to draw you closer to Jesus. Um, let me read. I got a couple uh, verses I want to close with. So, um, 1 John 2, 1 through 6. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is a propitiation of our sin, for our sins. And not for our, ours only, but also for the whole world. Not about me, is it now? Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Are you walking the walk? Are you talking the talk? If not, what's your cycle of refinement? What are you doing to get better? What are you doing to draw closer to Jesus? For me, obviously, my daily prayers aren't enough, because I do those. Heavenly, that's not enough. Where I'm lacking is my study. Where I'm lacking is that daily connection with Jesus. And that's not a single, that's not a single point attack, right? It's a multi-pronged attack. Prayer is big. Coming to church and worshiping is big. Studying my Bible is big. Connecting with other Christians is big. You can't do only one thing. You have to have it all. You do. You have to have all of those to attack and be closer to him. Last one I have. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I liked it better when I thought my problem was slow drivers. <laughs> right? It was easier to point the finger than back at me as the problem. I'm the problem. My lack of faith, my lack of connection with Jesus is the problem. If I don't have the connection with God, if I don't have that love for him, I'm not going to be able to show that love to you. The problem is, that, that's, that's what I've been seeing. I'm, not, I'm having trouble showing love this way because of my connection is getting faulty this way because of my negligence. My negligence. Not Jesus. He's always there for us. It is my negligence of our relationship that is causing this problem. I'm going to try real hard Monday. I'm going to try real hard. I'm going to try really hard not to yell at anybody. Um, no, I'll put this this way. It'll probably be Wednesday because I have to work night shift coming up. So I'll be in night shift. So that'll be okay. I won't yell at anybody on night shift because everybody will be in bed. They'll be off the road. So that's not a problem. Um,
be, be aware. Don't let what we talked about as the Gentiles, um, the lewdness of your heart. Don't let your mind corrupt your heart. Make sure you have that connection with Jesus, that you're making that connection daily. And again, it's not a single-pronged attack. It's a multi-pronged attack. Make sure you're doing what you need to do to have that connection with God so you can show the love of Jesus to everybody else, right? All right. So in closing, our closing hymn, and I forgot my paper. <laughs> What's our closing hymn for today? 326, all right. Open my eyes that I may see. Let's stand as we sing. Open my eyes that I may see this of truth that has for me. Place in my hands a wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, breathing my God. To see, open my eyes and illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth, thou sendest clear, and while the wave notes fall on my Everything lost will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee. be my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me. Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare love with thy children this to share. Silently now I wait for thee. My God, I will to see. Open my eyes and move me. Spirit divine. Shall we pray?